Okay guys, so I'm happy to finally announce that uh, the API Builder is out and it's just a demo for now but uh, yeah, you can take it for a spin and uh, see how it works. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's immediately go and uh, check it out. So you can clearly see the new design is uh, here as well. Uh, let's have a look at uh, what we're gonna do. So like I said, the API Builder is a no-code builder for your REST API. Usually, if you want to have a REST API, you need to write some, you know, you know, some some code basically to process your data, to store it in the database, and so on. But what we're going to do is, uh, we're basically going to be building APIs without actually writing code. And uh, let's see what we have to do to actually get that. Uh, so first thing you'll notice is that we have a new deploy app item here and uh, you just click here you then select which type of app you want so we want a rest api so you click here on the rest api and you just call it this is my api let's say and the only thing you have to do is uh, you click here on the deploy button and as you can clearly see it's uh, now being deployed once uh, this has been completed, it's actually going to redirect you to the list of uh, your apps. And yeah, it's uh, started successfully. The actual deployment is now in, in uh, progress. So if you click here on, uh, this is my API, right? You'll notice several, several things. So first thing is that uh, this here is uh, still spinning, which means it's actually still being deployed. The second thing is that the services that are being deployed for uh, for your API are grayed out as opposed to, for example, this item here. Uh, once it's completely deployed, uh, these services will become available as well. So what are actually the services? Uh, you can ignore this one. What are actually the services that, uh, that are being deployed? Well, first thing, is that you need to have an API which is basically just going to be a URL right and the second one is uh, the function that's actually going to be processing your data right so when you, uh, the URL is going to be used for you know post get and update requests while the lambda function here is actually going to be your functions your TypeScript functions which you are going to pretty much going to be using to uh, process your data and the database that's actually going to be storing the data. Uh, what we can do while this is being deployed is actually go and look at the pipeline on uh, AWS. So if you are actually logged in, you will be able to see that this is in the process of being built on your AWS account. So while this is uh, going, let's just quickly go and click on the API builder. And as you can see, here is where you will be able to create your functions. So like I said, your functions are actually going to be processing the data in your API. Usually you use uh, some kind of programming language to define those processes, but we are going to create a no code tool to actually, you know, manipulate this data. But in the background, it's actually going to be stored as code on your AWS account. But you personally won't have to actually, you know, touch this code at all. And let's just go and see. Uh, still building. Let's refresh quickly. Okay, so it's been two minutes now. This uh, this is going to be done quite soon. And once it's done what you will be able to do is basically just uh, choose the API from here. Once you've chosen the API, which you want to update, uh, you will be able to find the functions which have been predefined and just add them here. So each function is going to manipulate the, the data. It's probably, you know, you probably want to add some data to the database and uh, query it back. And whatever you've queried, you're going to see it here. This is the result pane. Uh, yeah, and also at some point I will have to add a database view so you don't have to look up the data that's in your database from your AWS account. But for now, uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. And yeah, 
uh, you can clearly see that it's built now so if we actually go to the apps that we've uh, deployed so this is my API let's click here and now these are these here are visible and the pipeline is in the succeeded state and we have a green check mark here let's just quickly go to the database this is the database that we will be updating yep you can clearly see it here uh, like I said let's go to the API builder now that we're here let's choose our API it's this one this is my API and let me just quickly explain how does uh, DynamoDB work uh, in the next video I'm actually going to explain how you can get some relational data back from DynamoDB DynamoDB is actually a NoSQL database similar to uh, you know MongoDB uh, but you can use some relational you know queries on it as as well as opposed to you know some other NoSQL database so I like I said I will demonstrate that in the next video but for now let's just uh, let's just see how this works uh, let's start by inserting some data uh, so you just basically insert data in in forms of a um, JSON JSON format and the most important thing to understand is that what you have to query this data are keys so there are two keys the partition key and the sort key basically if you query by a partition key anything that has uh, the value of the key in uh, this column is going to be returned back and then you can also you know further down uh, filter out this data by using a certain index and uh, I will show how you can do that as well so let's just start by uh, adding some data for example let's say that we want to add a user okay Jimmy and the type that we can also query based on is called type and it's going to be user so we've added the data and you can see that this is green which means it uh, succeeded but what we want is after we've uh, added the data we want to see it on this pane here so let's first insert the data so this is going to be the new user Timmy and we're going to query so first things first we're going to query by this here column by type so this is actually quite simple so the only thing you have to do is just do it like this so you add type user and just put it in some variable you can use any name let's just say users so we're going to add this and notice something uh, important if you don't add in your JSON here the PK and SK columns uh, the system will add them for you right so this is just going to be added uh, for you uh, and these are always going to be unique values if we want to demonstrate how this works if for example we want to actually add PK let's call it just you know 100 and let's do that for SK as well it's actually quite simple PK and SK and let's call this guy Billy okay and as you can clearly see we've added them we've added the new user with the ID 100 so we're going to do the same thing now let's just say one and uh, instead of users let's just add some movies oh and we also want to display this the movies that uh, that we add okay what movies are we gonna add okay so these are the popular movies from previous year so let's call this title right and the type is movie and let's not forget that we actually want to do the following so we want to add another query item that's going to add another field here that's going to be called movies right so how do we do this it's actually quite simple like this and just say instead of user now we query for movies right 
and just call the variable movies. So we are adding this and querying it back. Yeah, we can clearly see it here. So we're going to add another movie. Let's do it this one. Of course, we can add, add all three movies at the same time. Just add another function. Let's do it like this. You can see it here. And the third one. It's going to be right. Yeah, this is the third one. Let's just quickly check the database. Yeah, so the data is here. Everything that we've added has been added right here. Just make sure you understand that uh, DynamoDB is based on a single table design. So all the data, all the data is in one table. You don't have to have multiple tables. And like I said, if you want to do some, uh, you know, relational querying, I will show how to do that uh, next time. But for uh, for this time, we're going to just uh, we're just going to add the data. So, what about actually putting these things in uh, some kind of a relationship? So, if we have users, right, and if we have movies, well, users probably want to buy movies, right, or rent them out. So, let's say we have another type that's called purchase, right? So, a person buys a movie, right? Uh, so, how would we go about doing that? So, it's actually quite simple. If you want to get, let's say, a relationship, for example, a person has uh, bought a movie, you have to take the ID of the user, right, let's say Billy, and uh, the movie that he bought. So that's going to be, for example, Mission Impossible, which uh, is supposed to be 2. So you take the ID 100 and you take the ID 2 and put uh, for example 100 in the PK while you put uh, 2 in SK and at that point you're going to put them in a relationship so let's uh, let's have a look at how that can be done okay so Billy is 100 and uh, this here we're actually going to add all of them so let's say that he buys all of them 100 and this one's going to be one obviously we don't need this data anymore right uh, just the type and the type is going to be like i said purchase and yeah we also want to immediately just display this here so query items Okay, purchases are going to be here. Okay, let's see if this works. Yeah, it does. So we have it right here. So this is the first purchase. So Billy buys the second movie. And he buys the third movie as well. And there you go all the data from the database let's uh, let's check if it's here yeah the data is uh, clearly here and we've got the data here as well we we can now remove this insert and it doesn't matter now how many times you execute this you're always going to get back the same data and that's that as far as creating relationships goes right so next time i'm going to show you how to actually query back for these relationships for example uh get all the movies by a certain user so we already have like i said uh, you know jimmy bought uh, or in this case it was billy bought uh, you know the three movies so what we want to do is uh, get back the user and uh, all the movies that uh, that he bought uh, the only other thing that i can uh, show right now is maybe how to you know validate some data because at some point you're basically going to be checking 
maybe if some you know relationship already exists and if it already exists you don't want to insert that data again so maybe let's just say if we have some purchases here let's check uh, if it already exists and uh, we can do that by setting a variable okay let's just play with this so purchase okay so set variable function what, what it does it basically takes whatever you put here and uh, places it in this uh, new variable right but what you can do here is do some kind of filtering so if you want to filter this variable and as we know that uh, the purchases variable is actually this one we can actually do the following purchases and just say filter right and then you use a very simple lambda expression and say if the purchase you know pk is uh, 100 and sk is 200 then it's going to get the item that uh, corresponds to these values and it's just going to be this one so let's uh, let's check if this actually works so it's x dot pk one two three make sure to, to remember that uh, this is not a number this is a string right so just say pk is going to be 100 and sk in our case is going to be number two let's see what we get yeah so as you can clearly see we actually get an array and we've just extracted this here and placed it here uh, we want just one so if we want just one just say zero if we do this now it's not an array anymore you can clearly see it's only one item so if you want to actually check if this just exists maybe you can do it like this just check for length right okay so there is one item actually that corresponds to these IDs and it's one so let's say that uh, we said actually it's 1001 well in that case it's zero right because it doesn't exist it uh, it uh, doesn't exist so let's just uh, do a simple check for equality so purchase exists and we'll just say purchase exists should be equal to zero right let's execute this and as you can clearly see it's true so this variable is equal to zero what if we put it back and say it's actually 100 so that means it's going to pull this one what's going to happen then well clearly now it's uh, false Let's just quickly check this again yeah as you can clearly see now it's uh, now it's saying it's zero let's just uh, remove this to get uh, the updated result okay so the purchase is one right so this movie this movie exists the movie exists and the user exists so meaning the purchase with these two IDs are right here and the purchase is one so let's just do it one more time so purchase exists and now it's going so basically we're checking if the purchase exists equals to zero which means there is no such a purchase with these two IDs and if you execute it's going to tell you there you go that this is false it means it's not zero it's one so a purchase already exists so what you can do in uh, this way is basically just uh, stack your functions and uh, validate the data so assuming right that you wanted actually to have something like this insert right and you wanted to insert the movie here right you would basically check does this purse uh, does this purchase already exist right so basically let's say that the user cannot buy 
two movies that are the, the same, right? So we would check, hey, this purchase already exists, this, vali uh, this validation is false, return from the function, and the movie is not going to be inserted. So this is uh, how you would do it with the uh, code smash, right? There's uh, basically n no code that you had to write, you basically just stack all your functions. At some point where it's ready, you'll be able to just save it, it's going to be stored in your REST API, you'll be able to use your REST API from your you know, Next.js uh, apps or your Bubble or Webflow apps, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so guys, so this is it for uh, this video. Uh, make sure to try it out tell me what you think and if you have any you know feature requests just let me know and uh, i will add them so that's that for this time and uh, i'll talk to you next time